All right, good morning. Happy Easter. All right, you guys can go ahead and stand. struggling with and having technical difficulties this morning. Um, so we're just going to power through. We're going to start that one over. Tell them about Brenda. Brenda. All right. I'm just going to tell you all about Brenda. So happy Easter. So Brenda is this woman in our ears that counts us off on a track. You know, she's decided today that she doesn't want to cooperate with us. So she'll just randomly stop talking. And so we'll be like, okay, cool. Where are we at? We're good now. So we're good now. That's Brenda. Take two, forget that happened. <laughs> Happy Easter. Jesus is risen. But Brenda hasn't. But Brenda hasn't. Brenda's left the building. There we go. There she is. <laughs> Oh, 
super glad you're here with us this morning on Easter Sunday. And if you're joining us online, we are happy that you're joining us that way too. Uh, remember to like, share. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and our website, fallcitychristian.com. Um, so we are in our series today called Victory, which is very fitting for this Easter Sunday. Um, this is our second service, um, so we're glad that um, you joined us for that. Um, so communion is going to be, um, the kids are going to help with that, um, and also with offering coming around to you. Um, so they'll pass the basket and you can place it, whatever you feel to give in there. Um, you got a bulletin. If you want to get involved, if you're new, or if you have prayer requests, concerns, or anything, fill out that teriyaki thingy on the bulletin. And you can also put that in the offering collection tray. Um, we're going to bring back our fifth Sunday meals, which is awesome. Uh, so starting in May, we're going to uh, have a meal after Sunday um, at the end of that. And more details to come in May. Our nursery is open across the hall for your small children as well as our children's ministry. Um, if you're new to Fall City, as I mentioned, please leave us a message so we can reach out to you. We would love that. Um, and then I think that's it. And with that, we're going to sing about uh, how there's no grave that can hold us down.
same sin as that of the tax collector. But that wasn't the end of the story. Because Jesus then takes the cup and he passes it around. not 
for that blood that was poured out, there would be no reason for victory. We would all be have our head in shame. We would all have our head down. And we would all beat our chest. This is our time to to sit in that weight just a little bit and experience what had to happen for us to be here today, for us to have a chance to be with God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all your ways. We thank you for putting that weight on us, for allowing us to experience that weight so that we realize how much we need you. We thank you. We thank you for your son who came here, was beaten, and died for us. It's in your son's Jesus' name that we pray.
sermon was all about death and how that day that he died, every, everything felt unresolved. But now this week we get to celebrate that it is finished, that he was the ultimate resolution, and that on that day death was arrested. Sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope and no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remained my orphan heart was given a name And my morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me you have made me new, now life begins with you. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new, now life begins with you. Released from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a rat, faithfully born. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my life, Yes, we're free, free.
Amen. Dear God, I just thank you so much that it didn't end at the grave, God, but that that day death was arrested. And I just thank you so much that you had such a great love for each and every one of us, that you were willing to give up your own son so that we might have a chance of a life with you. And I just thank you for that sacrifice. And I just ask that you would be with us today and that you would be with Tim as he brings your message. It's in your beautiful son's Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can have a seat. How was that? What would you think? It was, um, it was awesome. You guys are a bit livelier than uh, the first service. So you got that going for you. It's because you got another hour of sleep, right? Or you had time to eat candy out of your kid's Easter basket. That's what it was. That's what it was. So I, I'm just going to get the awkward out of the way. I know what you guys are thinking. Is he wearing a pink shirt? No, it's summer salmon. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, no, I didn't get it from the maternity area in the girls' um, the girl shopping spot. This is a men's shirt, a slightly large man's shirt, but um, it's a men's shirt. But if it's Easter, you have to wear pastels. I think that's scriptural, right? I don't know. I don't know. In the original Hebrew text, I believe pastels was mentioned, right? I'm just kidding. Um, but it's Easter. Like, think about that for a second. Like, there's been so much go on over the past year. I just imagine what's happened since last Easter. Imagine um, the hours stuck at home with your children <laughs> or your spouse, right? Imagine, um, imagine having the margin that we've had, okay? Having the time that we've had, having the quarantine that we've had, and then you sit down to watch the news, and what do you see? It's hard to have the mindset that we win. It's hard to feel like we win. But this is the day that we celebrate the win. You guys should be more excited about that. I'm just throwing that out there. Like, this should be the day that we celebrate the fact that we win. Because if it wasn't for this day, there's no hope. If it wasn't for this day, there's no peace. If it wasn't for this day, there are things like, like uh, COVID that would steamroll us and we would feel completely helpless to it. But we are not because we win. Right? Listen to this. It says, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, I don't know why I do... Uh, quotes whenever I say other, but the other Mary went out to visit the tomb and suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone. And I love this part and just sat on it. Like everything was cool. Like it was normal. What was happening right now? Okay. He opened up a grave. That's just creepy in itself. All right. But he just sat on this stone. Like everything was cool. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell in a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he ain't there. He ain't in there. He ain't there. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and he is going ahead to you, uh, ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. Well, what is that? Remember what I have told you. He ain't here. That's what he told him. Remember that. Because as you run to wherever it is you're going, there are going to be speed bumps. As you run to wherever it is you're going, there may be doubt. As you run to wherever it is you're going, you may run into somebody who wants to discourage what's happening. But remember what I've told you. He ain't there. So the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. 
And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, I love this, as they were on their way, as they were obedient, as they followed what was happening, as they, as, as they were a part of what was going down, Jesus met them. And he greeted them. And they ran to him. They grasped his feet and they worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, I love this part, don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Don't be afraid, but we got something going on. Don't be afraid, but there are next steps. Don't be afraid, but go. Go to where it is that you need to go, but don't be afraid. Because for Mary and other Mary, it's been a long few days. For the disciples, it's been a long few days. Saturday was excruciating, I'm sure. Moments of doubt, of grief, they're mourning a friend and their Savior, their Messiah. They don't know what's happening next, even though he told them. They're not quite sure. There's still room for doubt there. They just saw Jesus die on a cross and put in a tomb. They're kind of in this, this Saturday, this limbo moment. And then Mary and Mary come to the tomb to mourn. Probably they bring flowers and it's a sign of respect and, and, and they find out that he wasn't in there. They come with, with an expe expectation of him to be where it is that they expect him to be. We do that, right? We want him to be where we want him to be, but for some reason, he's typically where we need to be, right? And so they come expecting him to be in the tomb, and the angel says, he's not in there. But then he says, don't be afraid, rally the boys, and I'll see them in Galilee, in other words, all right, y'all, we've got some life to live. This ain't over. This story is just beginning. It's time to live. And so out of this story, out of this resurrection story, are a few quick things that I, I feel we need to understand about this resurrection. Something that I hope, uh, especially on the heels of a, of a tough year, that we can carry with us something that can encourage us, something that can be our advocate, something that can counsel us, okay? A few things we need to understand about this resurrection. The first thing is his death gave us salvation. We talked about this a little last week. The death of Christ gave us our salvation. It says this, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still Sinners. You know what that says to me? 2,000 years ago, Jesus knew I was going to be an idiot. Yep. He knew that you guys were going to see this. And he died for me anyways. Knowing full, good, and well that I was going to be a borderline hot pink wearing ADD pastor. <laughs> right? And he died for me anyway. So why we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, that sacrificial lamb, perfect in every way, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored, we talked about that last week, reconciliation means there was once a beautiful relationship. Sin, hell, and death broke that relationship, shattered it. And this sacrificial lamb comes and restores, reconciles this relationship between us and our creator. All right? For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son while we were still enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. That's reconciliation. A relationship that was once vibrant, that then was broken, but is now restored. 
That's our salvation. There is no hope of an eternity in heaven without a restored relationship with our Creator. No hope. And let's get this clear. If there is no relationship with God, our eternity is spent separate from Him. And I don't want to spend my eternity separate from Him. He's my everything. So the the fixed relationship brings us heaven, right? It brings us salvation and eternity with God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. It brings us salvation. So his death on the cross, his blood poured out for a multitude of sins, makes our relationship right with God. His death brought our salvation. Another thing we need to know is that his resurrection gave us victory. Victory, y'all. I don't know if you've ever been a winner. Some of y'all maybe not. I'm not going to mention any names, Elizabeth. I don't know if you've ever been a winner. But victory feels good. It does. Check this out. It says, what shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, then who could ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his only or even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? For those of you who are parents, can you imagine anything that you wouldn't give up before the life of your child? I have two boys that I love very, very much. Like I'm, an, uh, I'm a helicopter parent. It's a little crazy, all right? And I love them so much. If you were to take one of my kids hostage, I will give you anything. This isn't an offer, by the way. I will give you anything, <laughs> all right? And besides, with one or maybe both of them, you didn't end up giving them back anyways. Um, <laughs> And I would give you anything. So if God is willing to give his son for us, how much more? How much more blessing does he have for your life, right? That's an investment. If I'm going to give you my son, I'm going to give you everything too, all right? Who dares accuse us of of whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for for God has given us right standing with himself who who then will condemn us. No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. For us. He died for us. He was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for guess who? For us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it, does it mean he no longer loves us if we, if we have trouble or calamity or, or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for, for your sake, we are killed every day. We're being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, if you don't get anything out of today's message, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, nor angels or demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or on the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Now, I don't know. I I still can't remember what teams it was. I guess there was a pretty good basketball game last night. UCLA, and who was it? Gonzaga. Gonzaga. I don't care. Anyways, um, (laughs) they're not UK, so who cares, right? I mean, blue and white, people. Come on. That's why God made the sky blue. Just saying. He's a UK fan. (laughs) Gonzaga and UCLA, is that who it was? Anybody watch it? Raise your hands. Uh, Nerds. Anyways, I'm just kidding. Um, It was a barn burner, wasn't it? It was like a last-minute shot. Was there an overtime involved? Like, it was crazy. 
We love that stuff, don't we? It gets us excited. You like jump up and you, you, you spill your buffalo chicken dip all over the place because you get so excited and you're yelling and screaming and it's inspiring. But this story, this resurrection story, it's not that. It's not a barn burner. It's more like a butt kicking, okay? Because it's an overwhelming victory. In other translations, it says we are more than conquerors. That's not a barn burner. That's not a last minute shot. That's not a Hail Mary. That is a butt kicking, okay? And so when Jesus comes back and he does this, he kicks butt. It's not even close. He takes the the, the keys to sin and hell and death, and he gives us salvation. He gives us a victory, an overwhelming victory. We are more than conquerors. It's not even close. The Greek word in this verse is hupernukeo, which means more than a conqueror. Not just a conqueror, not just a winner, but a victor, an overwhelming victory, a very decisive. It's a blowout. I'm ADD, so I just, in my head, I just said, yoo big summer blowout. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> stupid. Anyways, but, but the, the thing is, it's more than just a win. It is a major victory, major victory. So if his, if his death brings us salvation and his resurrection brings us victory, then those two together, you know what they give us? Life. Both of those give us life. Now, I know, I know you say that because you're sitting here alive. Some of y'all don't pretend like you're alive, but you're, like you're sitting here alive, breathing, moving, the whole nine, right? But this is different than just being alive. This is life. John 10.10 says, the thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Not a boring and worrisome life. Not a life where the carrot of a steady paycheck and a 401k is dangled in front of them. No, a rich and satisfying life. Like I said last week, salvation in its own is enough. But Jesus always ups the ante, doesn't he? He always brings more to the table. He always does more. That's what you expect out of a dude that could turn water into wine, right? He always does more. Salvation is good, but that's still not enough for Jesus. He wants to give us a life. He says, I have come so that you could have life abundant, a rich and satisfying life. Let's unpack what that means for a second. Like when you hear, when you hear that, a rich and satisfying life, what does that look like to you? A life where you have margin. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? To just have a little time to chill? A life where you have the ability to dream and to hope for things. A life where you're not so, so pressed down with schedules and stuff that ultimately don't even really matter, right? A life where you can dream and hope. He says, yeah, they get salvation, but they also get the opportunity to enjoy their life in the way that they were created to enjoy their life. This is a life that is more powerful than I think what we give it credit for. We get distracted. Take it from the ADD pastor. I get distracted. In the middle of a sermon, I get distracted. Um, But he says they get salvation, but they also get this opportunity for life. A life in fear, people, of impending doom is not a life. It's no way to live. You don't want to live that life. And Jesus says, the thief, he comes to bring that. Fear. Doom. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy that which you love. He says, but I came so they could have life. And not just life, but life abundant. Kind of in line with that, more than conquerors. Jesus always brings more to the table, right? And so when through Christ, we have already conquered the biggest thing, death, right? What is there to be afraid of? What are we worried about? 
2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a, a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. I said last service that I have two of those. I've got power and love. I'm still working on the self-discipline thing. But my wife, she'll put a knot on my head. Um, so think about this. With death being defeated, with death being defeated, we should walk through life with this, this giddy anticipation. You know, back in the first verse we read, whenever, whenever the two ladies, they went and they were a little afraid and, and very joyful. That's, that's kind of what it is, right? That giddy anticipation of what is God up to in my life? What is he doing? You know, I've gone through uh, the ringer on some things. We've, we've buried children. We've buried siblings. I've buried my mom. We've, we've gone through a pretty rough time in our lives. And one of the things that I learned to stop asking God was why. Now what I ask is, what are you up to? What are you doing? What are you doing here? How are you refining me? You see, because what he has given us is the permission to have an audacious faith, to take big steps in our life, to live like we have life and life abundant, not like we're just crutching through it until we die and hopefully get to heaven, not just like we're, we're here alive and checking off these, these religious check marks so we can not feel guilty. No, it's so that we could have life and life abundant. He says there's going to be speed bumps. There's going to be issues. There's going to be things in your life. But don't be afraid because I've come to give you abundant life. I've come to give you more than you could ever anticipate, more than you could ever have, especially without me. And we can trust that. You want to know why? Because the grave is empty. That's why we can trust that. Because whenever he makes a promise, he keeps it. And so whenever we say he is risen, and we say he is risen indeed, that's because he said it, and then he did it. And that's why when he says, I came so that you could have life and life abundant, we can take that to the bank. Because he beat death. And I want you to think about this, church. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives inside of us as Christ followers. Now that's pretty freaking powerful, if you ask me. That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. Think about it. And what is it that we're afraid of? What is it that's holding us back? What's the snapshot that Satan dangles in front of your face to remind you that you're not good enough? Because none of that counts. Because that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of every Christian. He says this, if you love me, obey my commandments. Easy enough. Sounds pretty biblical. But then he says this, I love this. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world can't receive him because it isn't looking for him and it doesn't recognize him. But, but you know him because he lives with you and now and later will be in you. No, I, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will crutch through life, miserable, and one day die and go to heaven. That's not what it says, is it? You also will live because he came for us to live, not just to exist. When I'm raised to life again, you will know that, that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. So Jesus speaks this before he's ever arrested, murdered, buried, and resurrects. He says, I promise that I'll send an advocate who will never leave you. Some manuscripts also call this advocate a comforter or a counselor, and I like this one, 
an encourager. I'll send you an encourager that will never leave you, that will never forsake you. The Greek word for this is paraclete. It's typically in reference to the Holy Spirit, and it means advocate or helper. So, so, so let me ask you this as we close this message. Like you walk in and you say Happy Easter, and we celebrate and we, we sing free, free, forever we're free at the top of our lungs, and then we clap whether the, the technology is working or not. Right? We're confident when we sing that. But as you live your life, are you confident? Like what kind of life is it that you're living? Are you living a life in victory? Are you that person that's forever the victim? Right? Because being forever the victim allows you that excuse to not actually live the life that you were called to live. But if you live in victory, now all of a sudden you have to take these steps that you wouldn't take because you're not confident because you're too busy hanging on to being a victim. So are you living as a victim or as a victor? Because the Holy Spirit says we live as victors. The Holy Spirit says we are more than conquerors. The Holy Spirit says it's not a barn burner. It's not even close. We are miles ahead of this dude. We are kicking his butt. Are you living in fear? Are you living in confidence? The same confidence that you should have knowing that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead and saved all of humanity is living inside of you. Why aren't you taking steps? Why aren't you walking in confidence? We have the Holy Spirit, that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead in, on, around, and through us. Are you living a life like somebody that has the indwelling gift of the Holy Spirit? Are you more than a conqueror? Are you victorious? Are you kicking butt? Because you can live like that. And you should live like that because you already know that we win. Because of Jesus, you already know that we win. Am I right? Are you guys asleep? Dang. I'm talking loud so you don't fall asleep. What the heck, guys? We win. We already know that. Like if you knew that you were going to win already, what kind of game would you play? Would you take chances? Would you do things that you normally wouldn't do if you knew you were going to win already? How would you hedge your bets? I'd be a little more bold, a little more confident if I already knew I was going to win. And the thing about it is with life, we already do. We already know it. Jesus has already told us he's already died, been buried, and resurrected, and given us the spirit that raised him from the dead. We already know that. And we have the power and the permission to live like it. How awesome is that? Jesus' resurrection means that we win. We win. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that life, it is filled with hope. It is filled with confidence and the power of the Holy Spirit. We already know that we win. So let's live like it, people. Tomorrow is Monday. Mondays suck. I know. But you don't have to walk into a Monday behaving like it's a Monday because we win. You don't have to walk in to your job, your place of employment, already defeated because we win. You don't have to to approach that relationship that's strained and stressed because we already win. Those things can be conquered by the one who loves us. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus who loves us. So church, as we step in to this next year, this next rest of our lives, do we behave like we are victims or do we behave like we are victors? Do we walk in victimhood or victimship or whatever being a victim is? Or do we walk in victory? What do we do, church? Because he ain't in there. And because he ain't in there, we win. Because he ain't in there, we have victory.
Because he ain't in there, we're saved. Because he ain't in there, all the sin and hell and death that Satan can throw at us, it does not touch us because we are more than conquerors. Father, I thank you so much for your resurrection. Because we know that your death already saved us, but your resurrection gives us life. It gives us victory. Now we can live this life not in fear, not with a spirit of timidity, but we can live this life as more than conquerors with power and love and self-discipline. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Jesus, we thank you for your resurrection. Father, I pray that we can live in a way that doesn't seem to make it in vain, that we can live a life abundant, live a rich and satisfying life because you called us not just to be saved, but to also live. Help us live in you. Help us walk in confidence with the power of the Holy Spirit, knowing that no matter what life throws at us, We win. It's in Jesus' name that I ask and pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can go ahead and stand. Um, This is a time, um, this is an invitation. If you have um, a decision you need to make, um, feel free to come up to this cross right here, and Tim can meet you after the song. Um, But it's not just an invitation. It's a celebration of life and victory. So... I want you to sing this next song with me as loud as you can. We're going to sing about a God who turns graves into gardens. See you.